There have been a lot of packages arriving for your Jeep Wrangler. You didn't waste any time. No, I'm super excited to start building it. Well, this is going to be fun. Today in this video, we're going to kick off the first round of modifications to his new Jeep Wrangler. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad and this is my son Jordan and behind us is his new to him 2006 Jeep Wrangler TJ that you bought how long ago? Like a week and a half ago. A week and a half ago and you bought it, went out driving it and then that night you were already on the computer ordering all kinds of modifications for it. You're having a lot of fun with this. Yeah, it's a lot of fun so yeah. far. So you were in Okinawa, Japan for a couple of years and you saved up your money and you had this vision about what you wanted to do mm -hmm. and now all these boxes are arriving and you're putting me to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do today, guys. We're gonna spend the day in the garage and we're gonna show you a couple different upgrades that we're gonna do and talk about some things that got coming in here in the future. This should be a lot of fun. I'm ready to just start wrenching. So let's get started and show you what we got. All right, so I talk about it on the channel all the time. The first things you need to have in your Jeep are some safety and recovery gear. And so what we've got here is a fire extinguisher with a bar tack mount, and you're gonna mount that on one of your roll bars back there. Mm -hmm. Make it so it's easy access, just in case, fingers crossed, we never have to get access to that. And then we've got a new first aid kit. This is from Outer Limit Supply. I just started using their first aid kits. I really like these kits. They got a lot of good gear in there. Yeah, there's some good stuff in there. I mean, being a Navy Corpsman, you know what's up, right? So this, this is a quality kit. Mm -hmm. right hopefully we don't need that but hopefully a first aid not. kit is super necessary and then recovery gear so we'll get a toe strap and some shackles and all that stuff but we're gonna install a winch and we may or may not have stole this winch off your mom's jeep Shh. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell her we'll put a new one on there i promise but we wanted to get a winch installed on your jeep today so this is the smitty built uh, xrc 9500 pound winch this is the same model winch i had on my jeep for like five years used it many many times it'll be perfect for your little two-door but you ordered a winch plate and not a bumper. Tell us what this is and why you chose not to get a bumper. So it's a Smitty Belt winch plate for the stock bumper. It was like $80 on Amazon. And the reason I didn't get a like a new bumper was I couldn't find anything that I liked. Okay, wow, that's tough because there's a lot of nice bumpers out there. You're gonna have to make up your mind soon. Yeah. But this is a good budget-friendly option. It's gonna work perfectly for the interim. Plus you already have a steel bumper, so no problems there. Okay, so we are gonna get this mounted. And then uh, after we're done with that, we got a couple other things, but we'll wait to show you guys what's up next. But let's go ahead and get started with this. Sounds good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this plastic shroud off, covering the sway bar, and then these recovery hooks off. There are just two bolts on either side of the plastic shroud that are easily removed, and then the shroud can be removed. Then, using a T55 Torx bit, Jordan removes the bolts holding the recovery hooks onto the bumper. Now, with both recovery hooks removed, then he removed the front sway bar bracket bolts. Only the front bolts need to be removed as a small spacer and then the winch plate will be bolted up using those front holes. Next, Jordan lined up the winch that we <clears throat> acquired from one of the other Jeeps in the family. Yeah, my wife's probably going to make me sleep on the couch for a bit. There are just four bolts that secure the winch to the plate. Make sure you use the supplied locking nuts and tighten the bolts down firmly. With the winch installed onto the winch plate, then Jordan laid it into place on the bumper. After taking a close look at it for a minute, he decided he would rather have the control box located on the side of the winch versus over the top. This was just a personal preference based on aesthetics for him. Now with the winch secured to the plate and the plate lined up with the bolt holes on the bumper, using the supplied metal spacers, Jordan inserted them in between the sway bar bracket and the winch plate and then began bolting the winch plate into place. Maybe not. It's not flat. Okay, so the winch kit came with some replacement bolts to just bolt it down, but we want to put the recovery hooks back on here. And the challenge is, is if you install the recovery hook the way it's supposed to go, it doesn't sit level because of the curvature of the winch plate. But if we flip them around on the other side, they'll fit flat, but they hit the light. But we've actually got some different lights we're going to put on. We haven't told you about that, so we're going to take these off. Then we'll get the clearance we need, and we'll show you the lights here in a little bit. 
While these old stock halogen lights do add a little extra visibility on road, they don't even compare to what's available in the aftermarket today. Plus, they just don't look very nice. They're weathered and tired, and having some bright lights on the bumper is going to really help if he wants to go do some wheeling at night. With the stock fog lights now removed, Jordan then began fastening the six bolts holding the winch plate into place. This was a pretty easy install and everything looks nice and clean. Next it was time to route the positive and negative cables and so we started by routing them underneath the front grill and then up through the engine bay. A wire coat hanger, something that's always in my garage, it comes in very handy. Once the wires were nicely routed, he secured them to the battery and then it was time for a test. This was a straightforward and budget-friendly installation, and now Jordan has the confidence to perform some self-recovery if needed. Okay, let's move on to the next install. Next up, we'll be installing these Casey Highlights Gravity Pro 6 LEDs with a driving beam pattern. These are the same lights that I have on both my Wrangler and my Gladiator, and I've been using Casey Highlights for years. Not only are they the best looking lights on the market, in my personal opinion, but the folks making the lights at Casey Highlights, they're just genuine off-road enthusiasts, and I love that about them. Now we gave a lot of thought on how to best wire these up and what we finally decided was to use the wire harness connector that comes with the KC highlights and trim that connector and then connect it to the old wire harness with the old lights. Now this means that we would have to use two connectors but that does allow us to retain the stock wire connector and just made things a little simpler to work on the table. Now this was Jordan's really first hands-on experience with stripping, connecting, and crimping wires. Because these wires will be exposed to the elements, ensuring that they are sealed will avoid any problems down the road. Now we could have soldered these together, but honestly these butt connectors with the heat shrink around works really well for this type of application. I don't think we're going to have any problems going down the road. With the new wire loom put together, it was time to mount the lights up. Now Jordan did have to slightly enlarge the existing holes in the bumper where the stock lights were mounted to accommodate the larger bolt of the Pro 6 light. So while Jordan is hooking up the second light, let me just show you that we are touching just a little bit to the recovery hook, but that's not a big deal. We don't plan on keeping the lights there. Jordan is going to order a fair lead light mount, which will allow us to mount the lights right up here, which will be kind of cool. And that is why we made this wire loom just a little longer, so it will reach all the way over there. So that's the original plan, but for now, it looks good, dude. Yep. Now, just a quick test to make sure they work. Yep, those are bright. Just two days after filming this, the fair lead mount came in the mail and Jordan didn't waste any time moving the lights over. We both like the look of this better, but maybe a combination of some center mounted lights and some wide bumper lights down the road might be the ticket. Which mounting option do you like the best? Let us know in the comments below. Next, it was time to give Jordan a place to mount his phone, and I reached out to my good friends at 67 Designs, and to my surprise, they already offered a kit for the TJ. I thought we were going to have to customize something, so this is perfect. There is a small mounting plate, which allows you to mount a couple 20 millimeter balls on it, depending on your application. Then there's the carbon fiber arm and the fold holder. This is a super simple install. What are we doing first? Uh, gonna pop this thing off back here. Uh, then there's two bolts, and then this whole like bezel should pop off. Okay, do it.
It's like Sam the cooking guy and his son. You gotta move. You gotta film from this side. Once the dash bezel is removed, to mount the plate up there are just a few holes that need to be drilled into the top of the dash bezel and then using the supplied hardware simply bolt it into place and then reinstall the bezel back onto the dash. Then attach the carbon fiber arm and the fold holder and done. This is very easy to do, and now Jordan has a convenient place to securely mount his phone. More information in the video description about this phone holder if you're interested. All right, so we knocked out a couple things here in the garage. It only took us a few hours. It wasn't too bad, so new winch, winch plates, so now you can recover yourself. Mm -hmm. Got some lights. You can do a little night driving. Yeah. And that foam mount's pretty handy. Oh, yeah, super nice. All right? Okay. Uh, look, I know that uh, this was a simple install and not something crazy, but I know many of you are at home this week with what's going on in the world, and so we thought we'd just break out the camera and share what we were doing here in the garage. I don't know. I had fun wrenching with you. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, so we had a good time here hanging out in the garage. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, now, there are more things to come. What's on the to-do list? So, lift kit. Which um, is sitting in a box yep, right, right over, over there. there. I know you want to install it like right now, yeah. but coming soon. <laughs> um, we have the tire carrier and then some steering components. Okay, all right, cool. Well, that's going to be awesome. It's going to make this thing much more capable. Uh, looking forward to on, that lift kit's going to be work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be work. But hey, we'd like to hear from you. If you're a TJ owner out there, uh, Jordan would love some feedback on things that you think we need to do to this Jeep. Uh, so let us know in the comments down below. If you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, hit that subscribe button. Love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.